Today we're looking at Pasco's wireless smart cart. So the smart cart is a really good tool for studying kinematics, dynamics, um, and Newton's laws. And it has a, a variety of sensors built in. Um, the sensors include a um, force sensor in the front. We have a rotary encoder on uh, the wheels on the bottom. And that rotary encoder helps us get the position of the cart so you know, we know how far it's moved along a track. Uh, the rotary encoder also helps us um, determine the speed and the acceleration for the cart. Um, aside from that, we also have a three axis um, accelerometer in here so that even if it's flying through the air, we know the, uh, the axis in three directions um, on the smart cart. And um, all of these are in a you know, really compact device. Um, these wheels have very, very low friction. And when you combine that with uh, one of Pasco's tracks, such as our plastic track or our aluminum track, um, you get a really, really smooth cart that's um, relatively, uh, it, it's something that's really, really low friction. So we can focus on what's more important in our um, experiment rather than worrying about friction um, down the track. Uh, the grooves inside of our track will also help the smart cart go straight. Um, so uh, yeah, so we'll be doing a couple of different types of experiments today just to show you the benefit of the smart cart and how we can use it to determine um, or in a physics classroom. So let me go ahead and set up that first experiment. All right, so uh, setting up the first experiment, um, I'm actually going to do something very simple is I'm going to just push the cart down the track, right? So as we push the cart down the track, um, you know, what are some things we can do with that? Well, we can actually show students or teach uh, students how the, the motion graphs look like. As in, if I push it here, what, you know, what does the acceleration look like? Is it accelerating down the track? What's happening? Um, is, uh, what is this, does the velocity look like? Is the speed pretty constant? Um, you know, what happens from, you know, how does the velocity change as I push it? So uh, the best way for us to do that is to um, open up our software and analyze the graphs on our display. So I'm actually going to be using our Sparky software, but um, you can use Capstone software as well. Let me go ahead and open that up. All right, so you should see our software on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and click on sensor data. Uh, my cart should be on. Oh, and one other thing I forgot to mention, we have a plunger in the front. Um, this actually allows us to launch the smart cart um, using a consistent, um, like a veloc initial velocity. So the plunger can uh, be set to different positions and those can be used to, to launch it. But I actually don't need it for this example. I'm actually just going to be using my hand. So here's my smart cart. And um, the first example we're going to be doing is we just want to look at the position, velocity, and acceleration graphs. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this uh, quick start experiment here. And once that's open, I see my three graphs. All right, so uh, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and press start and let's see what happens. All right, so everything's zero. I'm going to push the cart. And we have some data. And you'll see um, everything looks negative. So I actually want to uh, change the sign on that. Uh, we can, we, I could flip the cart around, but um, really I just wanna show you another feature here. If I click on the bottom left of this position um, data here, I can just click on uh, change sign and that will change the sign. So for now, I'm just going to re-zero everything and press start one more time. All right, so I press stop. I'm going to uh, scale to fit my data. And let's take a look at uh, what's on the screen here. So at the top, we have position. Now this data tells a story. Um, you know, I can actually bring up one of our, uh, our helper tools here, this multi-coordinate tool. So at the beginning, everything was zero, right? And then what happened? Well, I, uh, we can see right here, at the bottom, the acceleration went up. Well, what caused the acceleration to go up? That was when I pushed on the cart, right? Right after I pushed it, right, as my fingers released, 
right? The acceleration was going down, but the cart was at its maximum speed and it started going down the track, all right? And just, you know, due to the very low friction on the track, the cart, you know, maintained a pretty constant velocity, or constant speed along the track up until the point where it reached the end. And we can see this in the position graph, right? Where the, the cart reached the end of the track, right? The cart hit the bumper on the end. So the speed went down to, you know, zero or started actually going to the other direction because it bounced off. But really, uh, as soon as it hit that, the acceleration was negative. It stopped and, you know, bounced back. And, and that's um, us looking at the uh, relationship between position velocity and acceleration. Now we can also, students can just press the start button and just move the cart on their own to see, okay, how do I get something that's constant velocity? Um, well, let me move something like, you know, move it along. Let me try, there you go, let's try that. Well, how do I do constant acceleration? Uh, that's actually gonna be, uh, we know it's, it's gonna be much harder, but you know, I have to try to push it or maybe I have to push it really fast. Uh, students can explore how to get constant acceleration. I'll give you one hint on how to get constant acceleration. I'm gonna press stop. And I'm going to uh, actually use a physics textbook for that. There we go. So let's start this experiment all over again. I'm gonna press start and stop. Let me scale my data. And we'll see right here, let me go ahead and actually change the scale a little bit. We'll see. We have pretty constant acceleration here. Why is that? Well, that's actually due to um, the acceleration due to gravity. So as gravity is pulling this down, right? We see the position ramping up. We see the velocity is actually ramping in a straight line, and the acceleration is pretty consistent. All right. So how do you, you know, if, if what happens if we increase the the angle of of our ramp? And press start. Right, we can see here. Right, I'm scrolling back to our data. You can see here, right, our acceleration was actually higher. And I can actually show the previous run next to this by clicking on run four on the on the legend. So we'll see by increasing the height of the ramp, our acceleration changed the Speed changed, right? The position was, um, of course, you know, it's going the same distance. So the, the maximum position is about the same. But really easily, you know, we can change the variables and students can explore um, the different measurements of the smart cart. So I'm actually going to now jump over to the next experiment. So let me go ahead and get that set up. The next demonstration we're going to do, we're going to be looking at two smart carts. So for this, um, I'm going to keep one cart just fixed and one cart I'm actually going to push. And um, you know, when we talk about conservation of, of energy, right? we talk about energy being transferred from one thing to another. Well, if I push this smart cart, what's going to happen when it hits this smart cart? Right? They both are the same mass, they're, about, they're the same size. Um, let's see what happens. Right? I'm gonna push this. So the carts didn't stop, right? They continue moving on in the direction I pushed. Um, I had a little bit of power when I pressed this, and then uh, you know we saw the speed was, you know, it was, it was going a certain speed, and then all of a sudden, as when it collided with this, it slowed down, and they continued down. And um, I do actually want to point out I have Velcro here, so that Velcro really just helps the carts, um, you know, connect to each other and 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 keep going in a straight line. But um, now you might say, oh, what happened to the speed? You know, what happened to the speed of this cart? You know, as it right after it collided with this, All right? So traditionally, you know, you might have to use a stopwatch or photo gates, but with the smart cart, we can do that really easily with the built-in sensors. So I'm going to make sure both of my carts are on and let's open up our Sparky software again. All right, let me share my screen. All right, so I have Sparky open. I'm going to click on sensor data. I'm ready connected to one cart. I'm going to go ahead and click on the red cart. And you'll see Sparky, you know, he, uh, it was able to determine which one's blue, which one's red. All 
All right. So these are all, again, all the measurements that are in each smart cart. But really, um, what I'm going to look at is I want to see conservation of momentum. But actually, let me set up the graph uh, from scratch. So let's go ahead and click on graph. And um, right away, I'm looking at position versus time. I'm actually want to set this to um, velocity versus time. Velocity of the blue and the velocity of the red. So at the bottom here, um, I can you know, get a preview of what the data is coming from the, the device. I want to see, I want to make sure that I have positive velocity as I'm going in this direction. So let me go ahead and move the red cart. OK, that was positive. And let me go ahead and move the blue cart. Okay, that was negative. So I figured this out from my last uh, experiment, but just because I want the, the cart to be positive in that direction, I can change the sign of the blue one by clicking on a velocity blue, pressing change sign. Now, there you go. Now I have a positive number. I'll press start. Okay. And I'm gonna press the two, let's hit stop. All right, so now using all mo our multi-coordinates tool from the, the toolbar at the bottom, all right, I can see the maximum uh, velocity for the, the blue cart was about 0.62. And what happened when they collided? Well, the mass was equal to the same and they started, they were both going in the same direction. So we can see the velocity jump dropped down to about 0.31. So again, we went from about 0.62 to 0.31. So really now we can look at the relationship between mass and volume, all right? And that's uh, essentially Newton's laws, uh, you know, uh, M1 V1 equals M2 V2. So the mass of the one and the speed of the one, all right, got transferred. And if the mass doubled, then the velocity went in half. So again, uh, another, uh, you know, cool experiment you can do with the smart cart and visually see the data on the screen and, um, you know, try to help students understand the concepts. All right. So let's jump over to our last experiment. And for this one, I'm actually going to be doing um, Hooke's Law, so a spring experiment. Let me go ahead and stop sharing my screen. All right, so let's jump into our next experiment. So for the next experiment, I'm actually going to be looking at um, Hooke's law, and we're going to try to determine the spring constant of these springs um, using the force sensor on the smart cart. All right, so I attached our, our hook attachment here, and we also have another attachment, which is like our magnetic bumper, but um, for this experiment, we're going to be using the hook. And I'm going to go ahead and tie this around um, our track here. There we go. So when we're looking at Hooke's law, right, we're trying to determine the relationship between like force and distance of a spring. Um, so uh, the easiest way to do that, well, let's look at the force sensor, right? Compare that with the distance that the smart cart moves and let's see how the force changes um, as a result. So let me go ahead and open up our software. Once the cart's connected, I'm going to just click on graph. And really what I want to compare is I want to compare the position with the force. So I'm going to change one of these axes. Let's change this one to force. And before I click start, I want to make sure that the uh, position is going to be positive as I move my cart. So let's just double check. Oh. So let me change the uh, sign on this so that the position is positive as I move down. All right. So I'm going to zero both of these. So I can do that by just clicking on these uh, preview buttons and zero the sensors. And let's hit start and see what kind of data we get. So you can see it looks like a straight line. I'm going to just press move the string back, spring back and forth. Hit stop. And I'll expand this scale to fit. All right? Look at that data. <laughs> 
So we can see, you know, I was going back and forth with the cart um, because really I'm looking for the relationship between the force and the, the position. And we can see it's a linear relationship, right? And then, you know, using this data and we can add a, um, a linear fit line, right? Students can take a look at this, look at the slope and, you know, um, compare this with uh, maybe like another sp uh, spring and see, um, look at the equations for, um, the Hooke's law and start to see, you know, why uh, or how Hooke's law works. So I'm going to change the spring here and let's see what happens. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to zero our sensors. I'm going to press start. And press stop. So no matter where I went, where back and forth, it was, you know, a straight line. And again, I'm going to add a linear fit. All right, we have an R value of 0.99, which is really good. Um, if I check this box on run, run one, I can actually see both data points. So here we can see, um, you know, obviously, so in order for me to go about, you know, 0.25 meters, it took more force for the green spring, right? So I mean, this is obviously a stiffer spring, has a higher spring constant. So, um, you know, students can, can take a look at these equations, take a look at the slope value, see how it compares to the two. Went from about 0 0.0479 to 0 0.024. So we can say this one probably has a um, spring constant that's double. And again, uh, you know, this is very, very simple setup to do uh, using just a smart cart and um, a spring on a track, and we can uh, you know, do other types of physics with it other than just uh, laws of motion. So thank you again for watching, um, and I hope you, you learned something with these videos.